Welcome to The Shooting Show. This week we return to the last week of the rodeo season with Chris Dalton in South West Scotland. Plus we bring you all the latest news from the shooting world. Back in March, we joined Chris Dalton in the crucial stages of a rodeo stalk. It's promised us not only a shot on camera, but also a Gralikin masterclass. Two very good bucks there, the one on the back is clean. That's a really good animal. Get a chance, that's the one I want to shoot. That youngster's just chasing around, just playing. I just want him to move out of the way and then we go and see if we can see that young buck. Once they've got a bit further right, we can go forward. Chris makes his final approach and readies for a decisive shot. Long story short, we don't get it on camera, but Chris gets it down the ground. What we had there was uh, quite a nice book, it's just a young doe with it. So we've actually taken the doe and left the book to wander off, not particularly concerned, so we'll go and have a look and we've got a nice tree up there, so we do a suspended grog. Okay, got a nice young doe, dropped on the spot, that's what we want, good condition. I don't really like shooting doors much at this time of year, but it's a game shooting farm and we can't really get on to do much until it's caught the birds up sort of beginning of February. Um, and the winter barley is now just starting to flush, so of course what you're seeing now consequently is a lot of deer are coming out of the woodland and they're feeding on in relatively large numbers. I think we've seen about 11 this morning. Um, so the farmer spoke to me yesterday and I need to shoot one or two, so um, fortunately it has to be done. Um, it's a young doe anyway, so that's one less for him to worry about and maybe I'll shoot one more perhaps, um, a follower or a kid and then hopefully that'll just deter him a little bit and then we'll be starting on the young bucks, so that's a good morning out. Okay, we're just going to do a suspended growl we've got a nice little hawthorn here, Oscar's loitering, waiting for kidneys. Take the back legs off, just makes it easier for hanging it in the tree, just on the flat joint and hock it. Just get one hook on first and then it just takes the weight of the deer. Now we're just going to uh, bleed it out. Quite a lot of blood gone anyway. Out the exit wound. Start to congeal already. Okay, you can see we've got a, a yearling, which is what we wanted really. Um, no pregnancy in this one, uh, so I'm quite pleased that we've taken it out. I know it doesn't seem to make any difference really. They're in season, um, you know, and you could, you know, shoot the deer, but I'd rather take a yearling and leave the mature one. So if we do have to reduce numbers, um, I can be very selective about what we're taking. So at this time of year, just follow us or a, or a yearling doe like this with not pregnant. Okay, so what we've done is we've opened the pelvic bone. We're just going to free the anus. I find this is a lot cleaner way of taking the anus out. We'll just pull it all the way up the back and just nick it and then bring it forward out of the carcass and then any contamination is going straight onto the floor. So you've got a lovely clean back passage all cleaned out. One of the things we can do now while we're looking is just I'll start the examination. Um, and the first thing we'll have a look at is the kidneys. Still fat around the kidneys, even at this stage, coming out of the winter. Lovely set of kidneys. This is Oscar's reward for his morning's work. Okay, I'm just going to release the diaphragm now. Uh, this is why I think this type of garlic is the easiest and the cleanest. So basically, just cut and ease off the diaphragm skirt. And all the, it's basically the devil garlic itself. 
so that's just freed off one side and I can just nick the diaphragm and then there we go is almost grouped itself okay just to take the, the head off a lot of people struggle with this is if you just cut really tight along the back of the ears that'll, that'll bring you down onto the atlas joint and then I'll just extend the cut all the way around and then kind of turn the hat turn the head against itself and that'll automatically throw you up with the flange joint there and you see that little bone tucks into there you can't cut it that way so you've just got to get the knife in and just ease it off and then you do the same at the other side you just pop the knife into the flange joint and basically that's the head off so you such a lot of people struggling with that and there's no need and then basically everything is intact so we can do our examination another area people struggle with is actually taking the foreleg off if you bend the foreleg and just run the knife down that line and keep the knife along the same line and just cut round it'll put you straight onto the flat joint and then basically twist releases it and then just cut the leg off five minutes ten minutes after the shot deer suspended it's quite a cool morning the air's blowing through we've completely eviscerated and growled this deer so it's nice and clean um, it's cooling we'll just leave that there now to drain down and then I'll do the examination of the rest of the rest of the carcass okay. it's job done for Chris but we won't leave him alone until we get a shot on the film and with the Durkle quota not quite complete he heads out once again with cameraman in tow this is one of the reasons we're concerned you can see why this new buds have been nipped off all the way around the tree so this is actually the effect of deer browsing so clearly there's been deer in here okay the dogs uh, dogs starting to get quite interested now so he's obviously picking scent up i want to be a little bit careful going up over this ridge because of a bit skyline but he's definitely picking up deer wind from from over there dogs clearly got scent over there that's deer he only reacts like that with deer could well be laid down if they laid down in here tucked in one of these hollows it would be incredibly difficult to see but definitely something up here Chris decides that staying put will just be as effective as stalking on and is rewarded just seconds later when a doe makes an appearance now it's a slow crawl to get into a shooting position without disturbing his quarry The stage is set. Will it be second time lucky for our camera? The doe runs on, but Chris is certain the shot was good. Oscar, the Weimaraner, comes into his own and quickly locates the beast, stone dead. Okay, we've got him. That's amazing how far that deer had run. Good boy. Dead. Good boy. Just proves the worth of a, of a dog. I mean, the deer was shot probably 140, 150 yards the other side of the ridge, and we could see it in a kind of a death run coming down the hill, and then we lost sight of it. And it's actually come along the track and then turned and almost worked back up the hill again. Um, shots in the engine room. Nice little doe. It's probably not a deer that I would have taken ordinarily at this time of year now, but as you see in here, we've got five or six deer that we've seen in here, and unfortunately we can't open the gates and shoot them out. As I said, I would have had the opportunity to take probably one or two more of those from the position I was in, but I would never take a shot on a second deer. If I'd have seen that deer fall and I was happy it was, it was dead, where it had laid, then maybe I would have shot another one. But I think it's important to make sure you follow up your first deer and locate that and deal with it in case you've got a wounding situation rather than end up shooting something else. Um, so that's kind of why we did that. The trees here are not very big but we can you can always engineer usually a, a small branch where we can hook the legs up and do a suspended growlick. Bit of kit that I find essential now is the Apex Predator from Napier. Good piece of kit I think for guys doing level 2, particularly in Scotland where you've got to do a lot of walking. So as you see, even with a relatively small tree, we can actually 
get the deer hooked up, ready for the growlick. Animals already bleeding out, the shot was low neck, the carcass is cooling all the time. I can put it into the row sack without it actually touching the floor again and we can carry it back to the vehicle where it goes into a clean hygienic tray. This is Oscar's reward for finding the deer, nice set of fresh kidneys. Okay that's the deer all nicely finished, five minutes. Nice and clean, cooling away. So we'll get that in the sack and back to the larder. Again, the easiest thing to do with that is put it on a bit of, a bit of a high ground, a bit of a stone or a rock, or wedge it in a V of a tree, and basically sit down and put the sack on. And then you're ready to go. So that's a good morning, and uh, one day less within a protected plantation. So that's not been a bad result. Chris there making field grallicking look easy. And now it's the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News. There's loads to do at the UK Game Fair on the 22nd to the 24th of July at Stoneleigh. Countryside Learning is the fair's official charity and says it will provide a whole area full of rural activities to get youngsters involved with the countryside. The experience campaign will also have its hub at the Countryside Learning Stand. From there, field sports newcomers will be encouraged to try clay shooting, fishing, archery, air gunning, working dogs and 4x4s. Find out more at ukgamefair.com. Sport England is pumping more money than ever into getting the nation active, and shooting could be involved. The funding body has outlined plans to invest a quarter of a billion pounds into grassroots sport over the next four years. And Basque says shooting is the perfect way to get people active, whatever their age or ability. Chief Exec Richard Ali highlighted the fact that shooting is growing, with at least 550,000 active participants in England. A new Scottish Government website suggests police will need to visit a premises before issuing a licence for plinking or informal target shooting with an airgun. Basque believes the move would place an unnecessary burden on the time and resources of police licensing officers who are already under pressure. Basque Scotland Director Dr Colin Shedden said it was wholly disproportionate that officers must now visit a person's garden to give the all clear to allow shooting at a target with an air rifle. Read the latest in Airgun Shooter magazine. And finally... Emotive and inaccurate, that's how the latest Antis campaign against snaring has been described. The League Against Cruel Sports released a video that depicts a crime rather than the legal use of snares for pest control. Basque has reacted by emphasising that snares are a well-regulated, widely used tool for managing pest species in the countryside, and that modern snares have built-in features such as stops, swivels and breakaway links to ensure animal welfare. They said the League was running from the truth on the issue. That was the Shooting Show News. Well that's it for this week, thanks for watching. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And it's only nine weeks to go to the UK Game Fair, Stoneleigh Park, Warwickshire. You can buy your tickets here. This has been The Shooting Show. <laughs>